Good evening. Welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, February 11th. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to our very own uh, Grand Prairie Boys Choir alumni for the audio. Uh, we'll move on to the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that council approve the minutes of the city council meeting held Monday, January 28th, 2019, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Are there any errors or omissions, any things that we need to correct before we formally adopt those minutes? Don't see anybody ringing in or waving their arms, so I guess there must not be. We'll uh, we'll call for the vote to adopt that set of minutes, please. Thank you. That motion carries, and a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Councillor O'Toole. Mayor Given, I make a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Uh, Council will adopt the agenda as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries as well. Uh, and that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for anyone in the community to come up and address the council on any community-related matter. We typically uh, ask presentations to let us know in advance if they uh, would like to present to council. And we had one this evening, uh, Mr. Dernford, uh, with respect to snow removal that let us know that he wished to come. So, Mr. Dernford, if that's you in the back corner there, um, come on up to the front here and, and make yourself welcome. Thanks so much. Um, we appreciate you being here tonight and letting us know ahead of time that you wish to be here. Council, uh, have a seat and please be comfortable. Um, Council did receive the map and some photos that you presented, so we have those sort of all around the table here in front of us. And, 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 and Roger, if you... If, if you could, sorry to throw you off, yeah, maybe just point it so it's a little bit closer towards your mouth there. And other than that, it's pretty sensitive. It should pick you up. Okay, so uh, I guess I'm going to apologize for taking you guys' time. This is pretty trivial, I think, in the, in the city snow removal. But anyway, I've lived uh, in that area right behind the Eastling Center for the last 18 years. And we have a little path, if you notice that I have a red arrow there, and it connects to the pathway that goes around the Knowledge to Eastling Center and whatnot. I think it's called Knowledge Way. So over the last, well, since my kids started going to high school, I guess, in maybe 10 years, I have phoned, actually, let me back up a step. No one wants to clear that path, okay? So I phone. Uh, sometimes it gets cleared and sometimes it don't. Uh, if you look at the picture that I have here, what I used to do, I don't have a snowblower anymore. I would go over and I'd run my snowblower through it, right? Uh, and now another guy's or woman has taken up that clearing this for the kids going to school. So uh, I really don't have much to say. I would just like to ask maybe we could put it on the snow removal area. I mean, they do the whole path around the Coke Center and the East Lane Center, but for whatever reason, they seem to neglect this area. So yeah. I really don't have much more to say. Just like to see it get, get done. No, absolutely. You know, we appreciate you taking the opportunity to come and see us and let us know. Um, not every resident takes the opportunity to come and let us know when there's something that uh, that they think 
could be addressed. And maybe do you just want to speak to the second picture? There's another picture that we have that looks like oh. an area that's better cleared. Yes, and that's actually the sorry, that's actually the main path that goes around. And uh, but anyway, I mean, I've been phoning off and enough over the years that I think I've been probably bothering the person answering the phone, and they had suggested that I that I maybe move it up. I was actually going to meet with you, and they said, no, let's go to the council meeting. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. No, absolutely. We're happy to have you here and appreciate you raising the issue. So our typical process when something comes via public delegation is we would refer it to administration uh, to be able to go and find the details and report back to our appropriate standing committee. Mm -hmm. But you can rest assured that you've started the process or a process where council will find out more about it. Um, we also... Uh, make sure that there's an opportunity if council members have questions. So if there's something that they want to see clarification. So you're not out of the hot seat yet, I guess. Is oh, what I'm saying. okay. <laughs> um, but uh, just so you know what sort of the, a reasonable expectation is tonight, probably would ask our staff to find some information and bring it back to a committee. And sure. we can yep. follow up with you on that. Uh, I see Councillor Bressy has a question for you. Councillor Bressy? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gibb. Thanks for Thanks for coming in. So I don't actually spend a lot of time walking this area. Usually living on the other side of the city, I drive to the area and then I walk over. So just so I understand, you're saying there's already a pedestrian path there that's getting cleared and you think that that one's getting cleared fine. You're just hoping the solar connection gets the same yes. treatment. Yeah, I live in a, in a cul-de-sac where, where the Red Earl, actually on the opposite end of the Red Earl, I guess on the north side. And uh, so it's a city-owned trail. It's paved, right? In the summertime, they do a good job mowing the sides uh, snow removal, they do a great job going around uh, East Link Centre, which encompasses uh, St. Joe's, Polk Centre, East Link, and, and further on. But for some reason, it doesn't, they don't seem to want to plow that. But I must say, they did plow it after I phoned last week. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And ju just so I can clarify, the thing that they're doing around East Link Centre, that's a pedestrian path. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And that's another pedestrian path. It just goes to the cul-de-sac. Uh, I see Councillor Clayton had a question as well. Um, probably my question is better for administration, but I'll ask you just for my own knowledge. Is the path, I'm assuming the path, the perimeter path is being done by a machine? Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. So I don't see anybody else in the queue for you, Mr. Renford. Um, so our delegation business comes up actually towards the very end of our agenda uh, before we adjourn. Um, and as I said, the most likely outcome there would be we would refer this matter to administration for a report back to council. But rest assured you've got it in front of us and we'll follow up on it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So uh, as I mentioned at the outset, this uh, delegation portion of our agenda is an opportunity for anybody in the community to come forward and address council on any community-related matter. We do appreciate it, as I said, if you let us know in advance when you're coming. Um, but it is just one of the ways that you can contact City Council. Of course, uh, many of us are on social media. Uh, we absolutely have email addresses, uh, phone calls, meetings. Uh, just about everybody on council is ready to take somebody out in the community for coffee, if we were ever asked. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for coffee dates, um, but in addition to that, of course, we also have the Citizen Contact Centre, which residents can uh, call for service uh, concerns or questions as well. I don't see anybody else uh, here this evening for the delegation portion of our agenda, so we'll close that um, and we'll move on. We also have no public hearings and no unfinished business, uh, so that'll take us to item 8.1 under reports. Um, and we have a presentation of a new promotional video from Economic Development. And I see uh, Miss Lee there. Uh, are you going to make an introduction to it, Rebecca? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, this is a project that we've been working on for the past year, a well, year and a little bit more. Um, it was an opportunity for us to showcase some of the amenities and lifestyle in Grand Prairie. Uh, the economic development team uses this, or is planning on using this um, promotional video for investment attraction opportunities, but then also for local companies um, for to support their relocation efforts. So we initiated the project back in the fall of 2017, I guess, and through uh, an RFP process. We're very excited to award the contract to a local company, uh, the distillery. Uh, we have Chris Beauchamp's here with me today for the big premiere. Um, we've been working on this since then, and uh, we had a, an in initial casting call, went out to community members, and we had lots of different uh, family members of the community come out to, to join in the making of the video. Um, so I know that they're all very excited to see it premiere today, and I'm sure lots of people are watching online. <laughs> Um, but we're just excited to, to share it with you. So without further ado.
that was that's sort of our, our main video. Um, as I mentioned, we're using that mainly for um, investment attraction and more general relocation services um, or promotion, I should say. We had the opportunity to for a bit of a soft launch at uh, a conference out in BC a few weeks ago, and the reception was, was pretty exciting. People, uh, the comment was, well, I had no idea Grand Prairie had so much going on, and I didn't realize what was happening out there. So... It, uh, it was definitely exciting to, to share. Um, second video that we have here is a shorter one, and it's more for uh, drilling down into some of those economics uh, statistics that we're sharing and just putting a little bit of uh, the numbers behind some of the statistics or behind the images that we're showing here. Thank you for the introduction to those new assets in our repertoire, our tools, as we go out and promote the community. So are those videos uh, in uh, in the hands of the department, and are they available for use of the community if anybody wanted to share them, or are they something that somebody would have to come to economic development to, to get a copy of them or a USB stick or something? Um, uh, we can do, we can help either way. Uh, definitely encourage members of the community to help us share and promote. Um, they, as of tonight, they should be live on our YouTube channel but are also available. Um, they wanted to contact us and we can put them on USB for get out there, yeah. That's really great, great. Thanks so much, uh, Miss Lee. I don't know if there are any questions for administration on the videos, but certainly a great way to kick them off rather than just sort of bringing them to a committee um, or uh, setting out a media release, but uh, thanks so much for showing them off to us. Okay, I don't see anything else. Um, so we'll move on into our committee business, starting with item 9.1, the Community Living Committee meeting from January 29th, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I guess I don't have to request to speak on this one, but I would move that Council approve the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held Tuesday, January 29th, 2018, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Are there any errors or omissions in that set of minutes that we need to address? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. A uh, couple motions coming out of this one, uh, both dealing on the same one uh, around community opioid response uh, recommendations from committee. And uh, to call out the first one, I would move that council endorse the community opioid response plan and direct the mayor to formally share the plan with other community organizations and invite them to identify how they may contribute to the response recommendations contained in the plan period. Uh, so there's another motion that will follow this one, but just speaking to this, it's in everybody's package and it's uh, in the community. We just had our opioid, uh, uh, I guess, documentary uh, and the crisis in Grand Prairie of which we undertake, and I'm sure many communities are feeling the pinch. I just want to point out to Council uh, that it is a good and brief read, uh, but uh, this, uh, despite the fact of being a city uh, sponsored uh, plan. It is uh, by no way just the cities. Uh, many, many partners took part in a collaborative effort to put this together from a cross section of uh, service providers to mental health, law enforcement, uh, school educators, health professionals, the business community, and our own council. Um, it does follow the principles of uh, <clears throat> Canada's federal drug strategy, which is a uh, uh, four-pillar approach of prevention, treatment, harm reduction, and enforcement. Uh, but to fit into our community, we really wanted to stress, or I guess the, the task force wanted to stress, uh, that uh, in uh, treatment there is also uh, recovery. 
and uh, enforcement was, I guess, maybe too broad or too harsh of a term, so they went we, over to policing. Councillor Ambresti and I had the opportunity to sit down on the, the last wordsmithing work of this uh, document, and uh, I found it to be a very well put together document and a good start, and I feel like uh, it is a living document and it can change over time because there are some statements that could probably just be crossed off after we find out the answers to them. So I support council, or I recommend council to support this. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any uh, discussion or debate on the motion? Don't see anybody ringing in, so I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, so the second motion, I would move that Council approve the submission of an Alberta Community Partnership grant application to support intermunicipal collaboration on opioid response and direct administration to contact other municipalities and invite them to partner with or endorse the City of Grand Prairie on this application. I think the motion is pretty self-explanatory and uh, if there's any questions uh, that someone would like to ask, I'm sure there's many people around this table who could try to answer them. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Okay, seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Thiessen, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Yeah, there's a few things to highlight. Uh, first things first, I uh, know Council, this uh, all went around through your email last week. Uh, but uh, we had a community asset mapping uh, done and presented to committee uh, on the day of. Uh, and uh, this was done in partnership uh, with the college uh, uh, and community social development. Uh, and it uh, is there to provide a basis for further study and understanding of the landscape and the role of our community organizations and how they could intermingle. Uh, so there's a lot of stats that were put in there and uh, hopefully we'll be able to extrapolate those numbers going forward. Um, the other part that I just really want to talk about uh, is our director service area update, which is turning into the highlight of every meeting because it's where council and the community get to know uh, front facing what's happening, what happened and what's coming up. I'm just gonna speak a little bit to a few things that are uh, coming up that were presented in the director's, director service area. Uh, Family Day marketing campaign uh, has received its approval and it's in place and the development is underway for a great Family Day weekend this weekend. I'm sure there are activities all over uh, Grand Prairie as there usually is. Uh, also, uh, in, in line with that, uh, the final proofs were done for the spring edition of our Community Connections uh, magazine and are in place and production is moving forward. Also, uh, this Thursday is Valentine's Day, so uh, if you haven't got your ticket yet, Council, uh, there's a very awesome opportunity for us all to take part in the Passionate Heart Awards Luncheon. Uh, it happens every Valentine's Day. It'll be out in the county. Uh, at uh, you know the the Intrex Center there, I think it's called the Terrace Center now. I'm not sure if that's a name change that I just missed, but that's what it says in my minute packets at least. Uh, we all know where it is, uh, and this is a day where we get to celebrate all the the good, hard, hardworking, and caring people of our community, largely from education or social work backgrounds that are making our community. Uh, the best place to live, work, and raise a family and right on the front lines. And so it's a day that we take in to celebrate them over lunch. Usually there's entertainment. Last year I was the entertainment. I didn't know that. Nobody told me until I got up on stage. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you haven't got your ticket yet, please go. Uh, finally, um, we also had a little bit of movement uh, planning and design are ongoing for the north entrance feature to our fair city. So. Hopefully uh, we'll take a few more steps and we'll have a nice welcoming entrance sign uh, for our residents and out of town residents that are coming in to visit Grand Prairie to sparkle them like our promotional video just did. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. And we'll move on to item 9.2, the Corporate Services Committee meeting from January 29th. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I'd recommend the Council approve the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting uh, held on Tuesday, January 29th, 2019, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Anything we need to change before we adopt them? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Councillor O'Toole. I move the Council rescind policy 430, which is the drug and alcohol policy, and policy 403, which is the health, wellness, and safety policy. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, any discussion or debate on that motion? 
Maybe just for context, Councillor Tool, does the city still have any uh, approaches to drug and alcohol or health and wellness and safety? Like, these aren't things we're stopping doing at the City of Grand Prairie, is it? No, we've uh, had to make some changes because of legislation here in the last little while. And uh, I got Ms. Walker, which is the uh, Corporate Services Director, to actually explain in detail. Okay. Sure, that'd, that'd be great. Uh, Ms. Walker? There you go. There we go. Thank you, Mayor Given um, th and Councillor O'Toole. Um, so uh, we've done, um, as, as Councillor O'Toole suggested, we've made some changes to uh, meet new legislation in both of these policies, and we've redefined them as management policies. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much. So given the operational nature, it made more sense to have them at the management level than at the council level? Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any other discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd just like to be clear that we have new policies in place before these ones are rescinded. Ms. Walker. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gavin. Uh, yes, certainly. Both, both of these policies have be been rewritten and established as management policies. They're out there now. Okay. So the new ones exist, just that council won't see them and won't be in a position of having to approve them or update them as changes are needed. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Thanks very much. Thanks for the question, Councillor Blackburn. Um, I don't see anybody else in the queue for discussion debate, so I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. I also move the council rescind, uh, rescind the following policies, which are listed in the uh, the agenda. And uh, if anybody wants me to go through them, I will. But they are there for you to view. All right. Thanks very much, Councilor. Too. I see that there's a list of 14 different yeah. uh, reserve fund policies. Oh. Um, and uh, did you want to do any other introduction to the uh, to the motion? Uh, other than that, we've just, uh, as Miss Walker has mentioned earlier, this is. Uh, just a change in the way we are going to be handling the policies and uh, going through management rather than council. Okay, thanks, Councillor Tool. Uh, Councillor Bressy. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I, I just want to make sure I'm tracking just because you said going through management. We're talking about the reserve policies here, right? Yes, I believe we're, okay. we're working on the reserve policies. <laughs> okay, now. I thought I might have missed, missed something. My apologies. <clears throat> just to, I'm not going to make a motion at this point because I brought both these ideas up at committee. And even though I could make a motion at committee, no motion got made there. So I'm not, not going to make a motion at this point. I'm going to throw out a few ideas and I'd be happy to make some motions if I sense there's some support on council. I'd be very excited to support some motions that might come out of this. But two thoughts I've had with this is one with our financial stabilization reserve. There's a minimum floor on it. And I wonder if there might be... Uh, some merit to making it a little bit more difficult for council to go below that floor. And a tool for that might be a special resolution being required to drop below the 5% operating things. That would require a two-thirds vote of council instead of a simple majority vote of council. And just thinking of that is future councils or us for that matter, I, this is the emergency fund. And I think it should be a very exceptional circumstance to draw your emergency fund too low. It shouldn't be for nice tabs. That should be in a very, only the most dire of circumstances. It should be something that has to come with a lot of debate and a lot of public discourse if you're going to draw it too low. And so making it a little bit harder for us to get through politically might be might be a wise move. I'd point out that there might be concerns saying, while well, you're giving up power, that should be a simple majority. But future councils, if they were ever deadlocked and there was a simple majority that really wanted to change this, they'd have the ability to go with simple majority and actually change this policy and still hammer it through with just half plus one if they really wanted to. But it would take a little bit longer and be a little bit harder. And I think that might be that might be a worthwhile mechanism to have in our emergency fund. So that's one thought I've had on this. My other thought on this is in my mind, and maybe others have a different view of it, but in my mind that financial stabilization fund is our emergency fund to deal with the unexpected. And I don't know if I love the winter stabilization fund being rolled into it. The reason for that is, in my mind, the winter stabilization fund is an emergency funding. It's not unexpected funding. That exists because we know that our costs for snow removal are going to fluctuate, and we want to use that account to modulate the, the impacts of that fluctuation of annual snowfall 
has on has on taxes and has on other programs. And for in my mind, I'd love to have that outside of the emergency account, just so that I think that one of the things that if we have a year of very high snowfall, there's already a lot of public skepticism. There's already a lot of public doubt in our ability to do it, no matter how well we deliver that services. I think if the, if they hear, oh, and not only are they not keeping up with all the snows coming down, they're also pulling out of the emergency fund. I think that undermines some public trust in us. On the other hand, I know last year when I got to go to the public and they heard, well, you're having trouble moving slow and you're going out of budget, over budget on it. Where's that over budget spending going to come from? When I was able to say, well, council has a fund specifically for these years of snowfall, people had a lot more comfort in that than I think they'd have with us drawing out of the financial stabilization fund. So those are two thoughts on here. Like I said, I'm not going to make a motion at this point, but I'd be happy to if I sense I'm not the only one that's thinking out of one of these. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Councillor O'Toole. Just like, <coughs> just like to step back a little bit, I would like to actually approve Council uh, Policy 346, the Reserve Fund Policy, before we rescind the other ones. Sure. Please yeah, do that sure. in that order. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. I thought that that was the, uh, the intent of the motion. So the motion is to actually... Uh, approve the new policy which will hold all these other ones yes. and then after that one has approved then to remove all the other ones so yeah thanks very much and sorry i thought that that's what i heard you say anyway yeah well <laughs> but thanks for the clarification councillor Thiessen? uh thank you very much mayor given uh i'm not opposed to councillor bressy's uh potential motions coming forward uh i too was at committee meeting and uh, i expressed a bit of discomfort without having a ceiling on the winter stabilization reserve, which right now it's pretty much maxed out. So that says that we're not putting any extra money in there uh, and it limits that spending. Uh, one thing that I caution committee is, uh, is that it's not our administration that we have to worry about, it's our council sometimes. And back in 2014, when we had a huge dump of snow, uh, about three meters worth in about five and a half weeks, uh, council was presented several options. One of them was to do the Cadillac service continuously. Another one was to like just do windrows as what we did. And the other one was to try to create a hybrid system. Council ended up going on the windrow system. Uh, but depending on who's elected in the council of the day, I do think that poses a clear and present danger of, uh, you know, the public uh, coming on council and pressuring council to continue on with the Cadillac service when it may not be in the best interest of the community. And my concern is, is that would s severely deplete the financial stabilization reserve. Uh, and I do like, as Councillor Bresci uh, stated earlier, that it is a, a standard uh, and that we do budget for it and that we have money uh, set aside in the account. I can see administration's reasoning behind it, uh, but if Councillor Bresci is willing to make a motion, I could support it. Uh, on the special resolution, I, I wasn't warm to it at uh, the meeting. I thought it was an interesting idea, but I started thinking about it more, and I really like the fact that administration, when they were tasked by the mayor's motion at committee to establish a certain minimum and create a tabling chart that also shows how we got that reserve, whether it's legislated through the MGA or whether it came from a special bylaw. Um, I just sort of dipped into a bit of the revisions on the financial stabilization reserve. And although I like the fact that uh, the, the, the total minimum that's recommended is no less than 5% of our annual operating costs, which is equivalent to about two months worth of uh, operating for the city, um, according to the government of Alberta, they recommend that our municipalities, regardless of size, maintain a balance in this reserve of no less than two months of regular operating revenues or expenditures. Now, uh, looking at what administration has put forward uh, through the committee report, at least, uh, that it was determined that the appropriate to establish is the two months of operating recommendation as a maximum balance rather than as a minimum balance. So I do think that also poses a clear and present danger for whomever may be on council in the future uh, to dip in a little more without having to think twice about it. And I think that special resolution uh, alongside the minimum standard uh, would help protect our reserves so that we don't just wantonly throw it away one day. So. Uh, I can get behind your motions, Councillor Bresci. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. To be clear, we don't have any motions yet, and so we do need uh, to have a, somebody make a motion if they want to do that. Um, and so, um, fair enough to float an idea uh, and see if anybody salutes, but we actually don't prejudge motions by seeing if people like them before we make them. So, by all means, uh, after 
um, our next speaker, or I see Councillor Bressy is our next speaker, uh, then let's have a motion that we can discuss and debate. Councillor Bressy? Yeah, th thank you. I'm happy to make a motion just as I brought up on committee. I didn't want to I didn't want to belabor it if I was the only one thinking it. So Councillor O'Toole uh, clarified that his intent was to bring forward a motion to bring in the new policy first. Uh, Councillor Bressy is uh, discussing a amendment to the new policy. Well, I'll start with, which one do I want to start with? I'll start with uh, special resolution one. I would, I would move that we amend the policy to require a special re resolution of, can of council to draw the financial stabilization reserve below the recommended minimum reserve level. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Bresi. Um, so I think the motion is clear, a special resolution being two thirds uh, vote rather than a simple majority of council. Uh, so I think that's clear. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the motion? Um, I, I do have one, I guess, uh, for administration, and this may be sort of a, mm, um, how would management interpret this? So uh, will this, after this, after tonight, assuming the council establishes the new uh, policy 346, um, will the financial stabilization reserve have a balance? Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, yes, it will, and it will um, just be over the minimum requirement. Okay. And so if it was just over the minimum requirement, has management uh, forecasted using the financial stabilization reserve at all in the uh, this term's budget? Uh, no, it has not. No, it has not? Okay. And so to clarify, so after this motion, if Council wished to use the financial stabilization reserve at any time during this term, would it require a two-thirds vote? That's correct, yes. Okay, okay. okay. thanks very much. Um, any other discussion or debate, questions or comments? Councilor Bressing? Thank you. My, I, my understanding is that that would be the case if Council wanted to draw on it right now, depending on how much we want to draw on it, we need to do that, but we've also budgeted to put $1.5 million into it next year. We're going to be deciding what to do with the 2018 surplus. I think this is a likely place for that. So we'd be very constrained for a couple months potentially with this, but I think pretty soon we'd have some extra money to money. We'd have some extra extra money there. So I don't know if that would hold us the whole term, but definitely for the next couple months if something came up. Yep. Thank you. Any other discussion or debate? Questions or comments? Councilor Thiessen? Yeah, I guess uh, Councillor Bressy kind of closed there, but uh, I, I'm in I'm in support of, of the motion. Uh, and uh, in light of this motion, I probably wouldn't support any subsequent motions uh, to change them as they are. I just think it puts in an extra layer of red tape and a bit of a security check to ensure that even on the heavy snowfall years, um, that uh, Council will still have that relative warning that will tell them that, hey, we're getting a little low on these reserves. And our goal, I think, moving forward should be to build them up and to create uh, future financial stability and security for our community. So uh, I'm encouraging Council to support uh, this amendment to the motion. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thanks, Council Deason. Councilor Plot. Uh, thanks, Mayor Gavin. So I just wanted to clarify, so this, the 9.6 would not include winter stabilization. That would still be a separate amount? Or would that be part of the 9.6? Ms. Walker? Thank you, Mayor Given. So I quote, quoted the balance in the financial stabilization reserve at, at the last quarterly financial statement that has been submitted to Council, uh, which is $9.6 million. Um, and so should this policy be approved as it's been presented, uh, the balance that currently exists in the winter stabilization reserve will also be transferred into the financial stabilization reserve. And, and so just to just clarify for me, because I haven't had a chance to see the the way that that would go. So with the transfer of the winter stabilization reserve mm -hmm. to the financial stabilization reserve, will that is that what will bring us just above the minimum balance? Um, thank you, Mayor Given. No, um, the, the balance of 9.6 is what is exists in the financial stabilization reserve today. Um, should council approve the, the um, motion that's been presented to um, 
approve the new policy then there would be an additional i believe about three million dollars transferred to the financial stabilization reserve fund and remind me again what is the total so the the minimum balance the five percent annual operating budget what is what would that number be uh it's approximately 8.4 million okay thank you um councillor Thiessen? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, just a question for Ms. Walker. Um, at committee, there was a few tables shown uh, that sort of detailed where the transfers would go and what kind of money would be sitting in the accounts. You wouldn't happen to have that available for the general viewing public or for the members of council around the table right now? Ms. Walker? Um, I do have it in hard copy, um, and I could... Uh Put it on the screen. Sure. Yeah. If, if you'd like it, you can maybe take the presenter's table there and we can use the overhead camera. Just make sure we're using all the technology tonight. Thanks, Susan. You set it up, set it on the X, uh, X marks the spot in the middle of the desk there, and it will absolutely get it the wrong way up the first time, just like it does for every public delegation. And that's the outstanding items list. Sorry, uh, face okay. off. This is the, is this the one you're talking about, Chris? This is the 10 year projection. Uh, not, not the 10 year projection. I know that was included. I encourage council or any member of the public to check it out because administration has put a lot of work into this. Uh, so this is sort of those numbers that, uh, oh, it's maybe the other side around. There we go. All right, so uh, as you can see, the financial stabilization reserve, thank you, Ms. Walker, uh, is four up from, from the, the total line, uh, is at 9.7. Uh, the impacts from the policy revision are all in brackets, and then it would all just be added into the financial stabilization reserve at $13.873 million, and that would be our new outstanding balance, or not outstanding, amazing balance, or, and growing, let's call it that. Thanks, Ms. Walker. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing nobody else ringing in, then we're on Councillor Bressy's motion. Councillor Bressy, did you wish to close on your amendment? No? Okay. So Councillor Bressy's motion was to amend policy, uh, policy 346, um, and I imagine that would be Schedule A in 346 to identify that it, there's a an additional sort of line identifying that there is a requirement for a two-thirds majority vote on council or a special resolution of council two-thirds majority sure council Bressy. and also just in case i just in case i got lost in my fir first flow of thoughts just to point out that a simple majority of council could still draw below this if they wanted to it just require re revising this policy which a simple majority can do so this doesn't necessarily constrain, constrain a majority plus one, just makes it a little bit more difficult for them. Okay, thanks, Councillor Bressy. Um, I don't see anybody else in the queue, so if we're all clear of the effect of Councillor Bressy's uh, amendment motion, I'm seeing that we are, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, we are still, so we're on Councillor O'Toole's motion as amended. Uh, were there any uh, other follow-up items? Councillor Bressy. Well, um, maybe I shouldn't push my luck, but I am going to push my luck, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to try another motion around which stabilization. That being said, I'm kind of curious how you'd like me to handle this, Mayor Given, in terms of if I wanted to make an amendment to have essentially something added in the, into the schedule, I'd be... I'd be happy to to try a motion that would form all of these brackets in it, but at the same time, do you want me to do that, or would it be best for it to go away and come back to us? Or what, what? just the last one was easy because it was one line in. Mm -hmm. This one, if I if it's essentially establishing another reserve fund that's not within this policy right now, so it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer, and I'm just kind of looking for direction on how you love how how you would suggest I handle that through. Well, the motion. If, if you haven't consulted with administration ahead of time on what an appropriate approach to developing sort of your intent is, then I would suggest that it would be wise to send it back to administration. Uh, council can vote on whether or not they want to do that and basically send the policy back um, to have uh, an adjustment made. Great. Well, in that case, I will. Uh, and so we've never quite had a we've never quite had something like that. So would the wording of the motion be 
uh, uh, postpone this until administration can bring back potential amendments, or what would be wording of a motion that would have that? Um, I need to think about that. Uh, so we are um, we are hoping to direct administration. Um, you know, I think that this would be a tabling motion, um, and there would be a follow-up motion um, asking administration to bring back potential revisions like you're imagining. Okay. Uh, so one would be to table consideration and voting on Councillor O'Toole's motion to approve the new policy until such time as management can bring forward revisions uh, like you're uh, set to describe. Uh, and then at that time, council could consider those revisions and uh, the uh, overall policy. Great. I think I'm going to make a motion to postpone instead of table, because if I make a motion to table, that means no debate. Debate is permissible, and I feel that debate would be a, sure. good, would be a good thing for this. So I am going to move that we postpone this discussion until the... March 20, till the, I'm kind of looking at administration, what do you guys, you guys know if this postponement passes, what I'm going to be asking next, would you like four weeks, six weeks, longer? I'm kind of looking at administration of how long I should potentially postpone this for. Ms. Walker? Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, we could have um, an adjustment made for the next committee meeting, not tomorrow's committee meeting, but the following one. So then I would move that we postpone this until the until the March 11th meeting. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. So motion to postpone. Uh, and that would be postpone consideration of the uh, new policy as proposed in order to allow management to bring forward recommendations uh, to support a concept that Councillor Bressy is going to make a follow-up motion on. Um, and I would suggest that if the postponement passes, um, then uh, we also wouldn't be removing the other reserve policies um, until we until that time as well, right? So basically, we'd be setting this issue aside and reconsidering it uh, at that council meeting, as described by Councillor Bressy. Councillor Clayton, Mayor Given, um, I find it a little bit difficult in the process to decide if I want to postpone this based on not knowing what the follow-up motion consists of. Um, so I'm curious if we can have some <laughs> discussion on what the follow-up motion consists of. I mean, at this point, I'm voting blind. Right? I would encourage Councillor Bressy to make his case on why we should postpone this, and, and I think a part of that is the intent of what he's hoping to accomplish. Um, I, I think that that would be probably worthwhile. So my apologies, kind of uncharted territory for me having a discussion like this at this at council instead of at a committee meeting. So my apologies. I, I so the reason I only made a motion to postpone is because I did. I don't know if a motion with kind of two separate actions in it is permissible or not. But how about let me try a more fulsome motion. If you rule me out of order, then I'll be happy to sure. talk. But sure. So how about could my motion be to postpone this until until the March 11th meeting, and further direct administration to bring back to the appropriate standing committee. Uh, proposed revision to this policy that would create a winter stabilization fund within Schedule A. Okay. Um, and just to clarify, uh, what you just said was to bring back those revisions to the appropriate standing committee. Do you mean it to go to the standing committee and then to council, or do you mean it to come back to council with the overall policy? I think uh, I mean to have it come back to the st standing committee just if. Yeah. If we're going to do talk about this again at council, I'd rather that be the last time we talk about this at council. So, yeah, I think to the appropriate standing committee and then coming back to council ultimately. Okay. Okay. So, council, is that clear uh, about Councillor Bressy's intent? Okay. Uh, I do see others in the queue. And so, with that clarification of intent and sort of the, recognizing that it's those two pieces we're asking, we would, the effect of Councillor Bressy's motion would be to postpone consideration of these items and to direct administration to bring back a um, description of a winter stabilization uh, reserve um, amendment to, to Schedule A. So basically adding in a specifically defined winter stabilization reserve. Um, Councillor Plott. 
Uh, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I, I will be supporting this. I think it's good to keep the winter stabilization reserve separate. Uh, personally, I guess my question for administration, maybe it's something they can just bring when we do it through, is what's the proper amount? I mean, uh, you know, it's, if it's not being used, I don't want to see a bunch of money sitting there. I like the idea of having some money there. So if, if it's maybe part of the you know, presentation that comes back of we feel $2 million is the right amount or 2.5 or 1.5, um, I think some clarification around that would be good for me as well. I don't leave money sitting there if we don't need to leave it sit there. I do like the idea of having it's a, a special reserve for that that doesn't go into our financial stabilization reserve. So I, thanks, uh, Councillor Bressy, for the, the thought put into that. So I will be supporting that. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Councillor Thiessen? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, I know I brought this up and I really rattled the change at committee, uh, but I'm not going to support this motion. And a uh, big reason why is as I was rattling the change, uh, I realized that uh, we are looking to make a pretty significant change, like as far as how we deal with our reserve policies and bring it more in line with what other municipalities are doing as well. I don't see it as an overall general account, but I might be able to answer Councillor Palat's uh, question on what the right amount is. The old amount of the reserve policy would carry a minimum 25% of the snow and removal and ice control operating budget and accumulate to a maximum of 50% under the old policy, the one that is uh, being proposed to be rescinded. Uh, uh, through the report of administration, uh, they clearly detailed that uh, they haven't dipped into the winter stabilization reserve except in that crazy 2014 year where they dipped into it for about $1.5 million. Um, and uh, other than that, they haven't really touched base with it. Our, our administrative team is doing priority-based budgeting and has very robust scheduling. And there's a, there's a context of history here that I think can be applied to any recommendations that management might make to council. Um, I'm really happy with the special resolution that uh, Councillor Bressy offered uh, to council as sort of another check and balance. Uh, with that in place, I don't feel overly concerned about needing the, the ceiling of the winter stabilization fund. Uh, and I think that administration will detail their budgets and they'll work accordingly. Uh, and uh, if we do have a crazy snowfall year, I'm not worried that we're going to dip into our reserves to the point where it's out of control because we do have things on our side such as history and this new special resolution as well to keep our financial stabilization reserve, say that a couple times fast, uh, still up and running and growing. So uh, I appreciate the motion because I know it came from a discussion that we carried at uh, committee. Uh, but here today, I will not be supporting it. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Given. Uh, just a question for clarification. Would we not accomplish the same thing that uh, Councillor Bressy is after by simply striking the removal of the winter stabilization reserve from the, from the motion to rescind policies? Management to see if they'd interpret that the same way. Um, seeing Ms. Walker. Um, thank you, Mayor Given. So what we have done is structured an entirely different reserve policy um, that um, includes a schedule that outlines each one of the separate reserves. So um, what in effect would happen there by just striking it off the recent list uh, would be that there would be two separate reserve policies. So there would be one uh, for the winter stabilization reserve and there would be another policy for everything else. And so um, management for um, ease of administration would prefer that um, if uh, council so chooses to uh, reestablish the winter stabilization reserve that we incorporate it in the new policy format, if that's all right. I see Council Tools in the queue. I'll just enter to say that, that I uh, won't support the motion. I appreciate the intent. Um, and in my estimation, um, it is more around perception uh, than actual functionality. Um, when I read Schedule A um, and the description of the Financial Stabilization Reserve and its intended purpose, it's described as being there to provide funds to stabilize tax rates and protect against fluctuating revenues and expenditures by providing funds for emergent one-time expenses or losses of revenue. And so um, I think a year where there is excessive snow removal and we have higher than expected expenditures are clearly expected to, like that, that 
at purpose describes exactly that situation. We had to spend more than we thought because we had a lot more snow than anyone might have predicted. And so um, I think the financial stabilization reserve, as, as described currently in Schedule A in the new proposed policy, does exa is, is intended to, to fulfill that function uh, where we say, geez, we have a whole bunch of snow, we're going to need to do something about that. We're going to need some extra money, where should that come from? We have a reserve for it. Um, I think the, func the, the, the benefit of Councillor Bressy's motion is that it clearly identifies to the public and communicates to them that we're setting aside a special amount of money that's only to be used for, for winter stabilization and snow removal. And I think that that's good and, and laudable. But functionally, I don't think it does, um, does a significant improvement over what's contained in the policy here. And uh, potentially, and, and if I'm maybe mischaracterizing this or misunderstanding it, um, it does potentially mean that we have um, sequestered funds in an area that's only accessible for snow removal, uh, not, not other things. And so I think the intent that management has, of the changes management is bringing forward is to centralize the majority of the city's reserve funds in one relatively flexible area that we can use in a number of different situations. It just doesn't happen to say snow, which is unfortunate from an optics basis maybe, um, but functionally I have every confidence that the schedule as proposed can do what we need it to do. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. I won't be supporting this. Uh, last year we had a, a retreat. We discussed that we wanted some changes in, in some of our programs and places where we thought that we needed to have some changes. We sent management to come out and make those changes and here we're now second guessing those changes. Um, this is not the first time there's been doubt and I really feel that this management team, the finance department, the CLT, has a good understanding what they want to do, and I'm going to support them at this. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Tool. I see Councillor Clayton and then Councillor Plot. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I guess more of a question for administration, maybe for um, Ms. Walker. I'm not really sure who it's best for. Um, on a high level, I appreciate the intent of Councillor Bressy. Um, my question or my scenario is more of a um, an, an actual scenario in the sense that um, we have a 100-year snowfall and we have uh, a major facility in our community that has some disaster happen to it that for some reason we're not covered through insurance and we have taxes through the roof and without identifying, you're leaving the, um, the decisions to clear the roads versus doing uh, stabilizing taxes and expenses to council with a two-third majority. And I, I just think that at some point, um, identified money within reason is, is uh, probably more responsible. So I, I guess my question for Ms. Walker is, um, am I right in thinking that if there was this whole financial scenario Two-thirds of a vote, councils left to choose buckets. Okay, yeah, clear, don't clear the roads, but fix this and, and stabilize the taxes, and, and, and you're pitting one off against it, the other. Am I correct? Ms. Walker? Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. So um, if in a scenario like that where it was um, disaster everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that it would be management's responsibility to come forward with appropriate recommendations to mitigate the risks of any one of those items that you listed. And so that is, um, I believe, my job to, to bring that forward to you. Um, should uh, the financial stabilization reserve at that time be at its minimum level, um, then, and it was part of the recommendation um, to rectify those issues, um, then yes, it would require two-thirds of council uh, to vote. Thanks. I see Councillor Palat. Um, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I guess my, my question is also for Director Walker, and it's maybe we're just kind of going back to the uh, the intent, and, and uh, Councillor O'Toole had mentioned, you know, we did ask you guys to test it, you know, try to find uh, some, some efficiencies, and I'm assuming by having one fund, it's going to be a lot easier for us to manage one fund than, than the multiple funds, but 
I'm more concerned, or my question's more around, will it give us a better chance for investment opportunities if we have one fund that we can rotate through versus a lot of other funds? Dr. Wall. Um, thank you, Mayor Given. So um, our investment pool is made up of a total of the reserve funds that we have in place and any other surplus revenues that we have for a short period of time. So we have both long-term and short-term investments. And we would look at those um, as individual um, uh, bodies of money. They're not invested separately as separate reserves. Um, the logic behind uh, eliminating the winter stabilization reserve and establishing it as part of the financial stabilization reserve is essentially because it's a stabilization reserve. And um, the, um, the idea that there would be reserves uh, in each area or for each purpose um, was something that we were trying to move away from um, in that really there is only one financial stabilization or really there is only one purpose of a financial stabilization reserve and it ought to be viewed in light of all of the needs um, of the community and the organization as a whole. So <clears throat> partitioning it up into little segments um, does not um, limit Council's ability to utilize those funds for any purpose that it so chose anyway. Um, so that was the logic. Okay, that makes sense. And I think for me, I'm struggling, and I think uh, Mary Given said the word. I think optically, I like it better if we had them separated, but I think on a management perspective and, and on overall, it, it achieves the same thing. So um, I'm actually going to say I'm not going to support the motion because I think that the intent is, is covered by what's, what's happening here. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Um, I would just offer that um, if Council chooses not to postpone, um, then uh, and there was still a concern that uh, we wanted to ensure that the community was aware that we have the flexibility within our reserve funds to manage extreme winter weather events. Um, a, another potential way to achieve that might be just to rename the reserve. Uh, right now it's called the Financial Stabilization Reserve as proposed by management. Um, less technical than getting management to describe an entirely new reserve and hive off money might be to call it the Financial and Winter Stabilization Reserve by simply amending the name. Uh, I just offer that if, if this motion doesn't pass. Councillor Thiessen. Wow, that sounds something similar like that I was going to say, but that was just off the cuff. Obviously, the mayor flies off the cuff sometimes too. Uh, yeah, I just uh, just want to throw in a little extra added uh, food for thought uh, that in those heavy snowfall years, we will be depleting uh, winter stabilization reserve as we would be the financial stabilization reserves. The, the difference comes uh, when we do our next budget. And then we go, oh, well, we drained one and a half million dollars out of that fund, so we got to top it back up. Maybe we give it a million. Uh, and the financial stabilization a million, whereas we might, you know, otherwise not take that extra revenue and figure that we got to partition it out and one for one purpose and the rest for the whole purpose of, of our organization. So I like the mayor's off the cuff comment, a financial and winter stabilization reserve. Um, I'm okay with it just being a financial stabilization reserve and, uh, and to be used uh, accordingly when it is needed. So. Sorry, Councillor Bressy. I know I was with you at committee, but uh, I'm against you today. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen, for those comments. I don't see anybody else in the queue, and so we'll go to Councillor Bressy to close. Great. Well, th first, I just want to thank the room for patience with me as I figured out the motion so that we could figure out a way to have this conversation. So thank you again for that. It's, it's interesting. I think that Councillor Toole talked me into voting against my own motion, and now Councillor Thiessen might have talked me back, in, back into it. Uh, one... One thought that one thought that I have is, well, two thoughts. I think I'd go back to the purposes of this reserve is emergent one-time expenses. In my mind, we know that every few years we're going to go over budget or snow removal. Almost certainly, that's kind of the nature of living in northern Canada, where we don't have predictable snowfall. And I think, th and th in the past, we haven't had. My understanding is a part of the reason we haven't had to draw from the winter stabilization reserve in the past is because we had surpluses to draw from. Is my understanding, and we've heard that we're not that we're as we're budgeting lean, we're not going to have that same, we're not going to have that same luxury necessarily in future in future years. I think one of the reasons that one of the reasons from a governance perspective that's not just optical why this might be valuable is 
it's a good reminder if if we've got a pool of twenty million dollars and we draw one million dollars from it because the because we have a bad snowfall, I don't think there's the same pressure to put that one million dollars back into this big large pool that's that's functioning to stabilize the whole city. On the other hand, if we've got a winter stabilization fund and we and we deplete it with one year of heavy snowfall, then there's a lot of pressure to get it back up quickly so that we know that there's money there in a couple of years where it snows where it snows again. So uh, that might be a reason to think about having a separate fund for winter stabilization. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Uh, so Councillor Bressy's motion to postpone to March 11th, I think it was, Councillor Bressy, um, and to ask administration to present an amendment uh, with respect to establishing a separate winter stabilization reserve um, shed in for Schedule A uh, at the appropriate standing committee. Um, so we're all, I think, clear on that motion. I just want to look around and make eye contact with everybody, make sure that we're all clear on the effect of Council Bressy's motion. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion does not carry. Um, are there, so we are uh, back to Councillor O'Toole's motion as amended uh, in the first time to add that two thirds uh, requirement on the financial stabilization reserve. Are there, is there anything else before we call for the vote on Councillor O'Toole's motion? I see none. Then we will call for the vote on Councillor O'Toole's motion to establish policy 346 as amended. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, I just got a little something here from the rest of the meeting. Uh, we have corporate sorry, services. Sorry, Councillor O'Toole. I, I think what we did is we established the new policy. We still have to do that second bit Rescind that has that. all that, that, yeah, rescinding all the other ones. Okay. I am sorry. Uh, I move that Council rescind the, the following policies that are listed in the agenda. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Council Tool. And that is the uh, the 14 different sort of pre-existing policies that, which now would all be covered and rolled up under policy 346 that we just approved. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Tool. All right, back on cue again. It was a little confusing there for the last 40 minutes. Okay, uh, Ms. Walker gave a service area verbal report and assessment and taxation notices of assessment have been mailed out earlier this month and will be open to appeal until April 5th. And assessors will be handing, handling any inquiries regarding the new assessments over the next two months. Under the corporate facility management, staff are preparing for the spring, possibly summer demolition of the old school board building, as well as some minor renovations to the uh, CSD building, uh, which will include some flooring and painting. We also have uh, staff has started working on the process for the loan consolidation and refinancing and are continuing to work on a year end process. And uh, work has commenced on the initial phase of the recreational management system software implementation project. That's a lot of syllables there in a short story. Um, other than that, uh, information technology services staff have prepared uh, some uh, stuff to be sold on Gov deals and uh, just procurement. Procurement reviews are expected to be completed by year uh, by the end of March with a view to replace our self-pay program with purchase cards, the 2018 total revenue from Gov De Deals surplus sales was $82,300, and the total pr procurement for 2018 stats have been compiled, and a total of 118 competitive bids were issued, with a total award value of $36,000. Five hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars. That's what corporate services did. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Um, we'll move on to the Arts Development Committee meeting from February sixth. Councillor Blackburn, I think that was your set of minutes. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, yes, the uh, Arts Development Committee met um, this past week 
and um, we're very happy to support a number of organizations um, through uh, through uh, grant funding. Uh, we dealt with uh, a major project funding request uh, for $3,000 for the Edmonton Ballet Project Workshop, which, uh, um, which we, we supported in full. And um, we also made grants totaling nearly $57,000 to cover um, 11 um, uh, fun, uh, festival uh, funding requests, um, uh, quite a variety of them actually. Uh, supporting a, a good number of uh, of people uh, across many interests within Grand Prairie, and I won't go into the details at this point. Uh, I believe uh, all of those details have actually already shown up in the Daily Herald Tribune. Um, the The other thing that happened at that meeting was that we uh, made two amendments to the terms of reference document for the. Um, um, for the various funds that are dealt with, uh, in that we identified some restrictions to the amount of money that would be granted um, uh, in the scholarship funding and in the individual project funding. Uh, the purpose being, one, to ensure that we're able to distribute to a wider um, um, cross-section of applicants and also to make applicants more aware that... Um, um, uh, some requests for larger sums of money simply uh, we 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 can't entertain for uh, for the simple reason that uh, these funds are in such high demand. So we made a couple of changes, and those people who are interested in making applications in the future will uh, uh, will be able to look up that information and uh, and apply it as they need to. The one other thing I will mention about the funding for um, festivals is that it's a, a seventy thousand dollar fund each year and so we have uh, a little over thirteen thousand dollars left that we might grant to applications that we receive uh, by the deadline uh, in the fall which i believe is at the end of september and uh, that was the uh, the total of our business for the arts development committee okay, thanks very much uh, council blackman did you make a motion to receive that set of minutes sorry did you make a motion to receive that set of minutes? Uh, yes, I would make a motion that we accept the minutes of, of the Arts Development Committee meeting held February 6th. Okay, thanks very much. Um, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, uh, and I believe that that handles all of our committee business for this evening. Uh, I don't believe we have any items of correspondence. And, of course, we did have our one delegation, though, uh, with Mr. Durnford's uh, concern around uh, snow removal on a pedestrian link. And uh, I see Councilor Bress is in the queue. Councilor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we ask administration to provide a verbal report of this to the appropriate standing committee. And just to speak to this, I think it's appropriate that we make sure this lands on a committee agenda somewhere. At the same time, I don't think that this needs the resources that go into a written report and the weeks and the hours of time that that takes. So the verbal is a very key word in this. Okay, thanks very much. I just see our Director of Community Living, uh, Mr. Miller. Sorry, Director Miller. Not There you go. Now you're on. Wait. Thank you, uh, Mayor Given. So in listening to the delegation tonight, I've sent an email to uh, a couple different departments trying to figure out which department actually looks after the path. It's either transportation or parks. And uh, I'm hopeful to actually have the information for tomorrow morning okay. for uh, Community Living Committee. Great. Okay. That would be a great spot for that verbal report. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Director Miller, for following up and uh, Councillor Bressy for your motion. Is there any discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, I don't believe we had any notices of motion, and so we'll go to council member reports. Um, I don't believe there are any reports from our external agencies, boards, or commissions that council let me know ahead of time, and so then maybe we would just move to council roundtable, and we'll start with Councillor Thiessen. I'm so lucky today. I get to start out the roundtable. That's awesome. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, just a few things I want to touch uh, base on. Uh, of course, uh, it was the end of Literacy Week uh, last week, so I managed to find my way into about four more schools. 
uh, which is always great. It's reading to kids of all ages. Uh, but on the last day of reading, I did uh, happen to take in the Grand Prairie Construction Association AGM. Uh, it's always good to get in the same room with some of our builders. I know we're starting to do that a little bit more. Uh, but there are several presentations from industry as well as from uh, the province. And our, our very own Councillor Bressy stepped in. Uh, and gave a presentation to the uh, Construction Association, the AGM, describing what Grand Prairie is doing to support the construction industry and how we're trying to cut red tape and make projects happen a lot faster. I think he did an admirable job uh, with uh, Councillor O'Toole and Plant also in the house to uh, witness that. So good job, Councillor Bressy. Uh, then on uh, February 6th, I had the honor of getting to sit beside uh, uh, Ms. Susan Thompson, one of our uh, George Repka Award winners at our volunteer recognition event, uh, and uh, see her win that award for practically a lifetime of service, largely to kids and, and mostly to our community. Uh, she's an incredible uh, little ball of energy that just never stops going, and I think she's busier now that she's retired from teaching and principaling. Uh, and uh, putting in uh, time and a half as a volunteer for a variety of causes. So it was really good to see a good person get rewarded and through the process that the city does. I will tip of the hat to Willie Braun, who wasn't able to make the event, and uh, also a tip of the hat to uh, Bandage Paws, our organization of the year, uh, through the Bill Bowes Award. Uh, so it was an excellent event to be a part of. Uh, Councillor. Clyde Blackburn stepped in for the mayor on that one as well, and himself did an admirable job of keeping all of our volunteers uh, entertained and uh, at least attentive uh, to why we all were there and being such a gracious host. So thank you very much, Councillor Blackburn. Finally, uh, since I am talking about Councillor Blackburn, I'd just like to offer my congratulations. I know you weren't here at our last council meeting. Uh, you were busy working on a production called the Mamma Mia, uh, not just any production, uh, it is currently uh, the highest attended theater event in the history of Grand Prairie with attendance records and is completely sold out. So, uh, and that's after adding another show. So uh, I know to my council colleague, Clyde Blackburn, I know you did a big part of it. My former council colleague, Rory Tarrant, is also working behind the scenes in producing that in directing it as well. Thank you, Councillor Blackburn. So uh, huge kudos to all the cast and crew involved and uh, big congratulations not only to you, Mr. Blackburn, but also to the Grand Prairie Live Theatre for putting out quality shows for our community. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Blackburn. Well, thank you and uh, Councillor Thiessen, I appreciate your uh, your comments and uh, stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, the, the only thing that I will uh, highlight at this point is that uh, uh, I attended uh, a presentation by the Alzheimer's Society to the, um, to the knitting club at uh, Prairie Lake um, uh, home the other day. And it was really an interesting presentation. It was an opportunity for the Alzheimer's Society to, um, uh, to explain to people who may best take advantage of their services, exactly what those services are and the kinds of things that they cover. And the other thing that was very interesting about it is that um, um, Alice Brick, who is um, uh, a senior member of our community who has contributed very much so to our community over the many years, uh, has been producing these muffs, which I don't know that I can adequately describe, but they're um, a, a tactile and a visual sensation in that um, you can put your hands inside these muffs and not only would they keep your hands warm, but there are things to touch and feel and rub both inside the muff and outside, which apparently um, is a calming action for those people who may be distressed or whose, um, whose minds may be wandering and needing of a little bit of comfort. Uh, and she had, every single one of them was different. She had couple of dozen of them there and she keeps making them um, so it was it was very interesting to uh, to be able to see those and actually try one on um, not that I really needed it but <laughs> it was uh, it was a great presentation and I really do appreciate the contributions that the Alzheimer's Society makes to those seniors um, in need of their services thanks very much Mr. Blackburn Councillor Plot.
Thank you. Um, a couple of events I want to highlight. Uh, I missed last council meeting. Uh, I was away to a ICSC West, or in Whistler for an international conference for shopping centers. Easy one to say. And I want to throw a shout out to Rebecca Lee, who had did a presentation earlier, and uh, Lauren, who did a great job presenting the City of Grand Prairie. Very good booth. I was really impressed. We got to see the promotional videos live there, and it was uh, well received, and I thought they did a very good job, and, and the, the booth was busy, so it was, it was good. Um, fun event. Lots of lots of uh, positive things. Maybe cautiously optimistic is a better word, but but positive things for our area. Um, the other event that was a lot of fun, on a different note, was uh, last... Uh, Saturday was going to the municipal county city curling bond spiel uh, with uh, Councillor Thiessen, Councillor O'Toole and, and Councillor Bressy had stopped in as well. Uh, it was just fun to, to see um, again that we, you know, our administrations do work well together. There was a lot of people on both sides of the trenches, so to speak, that were in the curling bond spiel having fun, dipping a few pops. And so it was, it was a lot of fun and it was a good event and something I look forward to doing again. Still not a good curler. The humbling part was my wife's team beat me in the last game, so that was disappointing. But anyways, it was, it was a good event overall. Thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Councillor Clayton. I also attended uh, the ICSC Economic Development Conference that uh, Councillor Platt referenced, and it was a great opportunity to have conversations with uh, different sectors, everybody from um, home builders and, and developers to uh, actual retailers and, and shopping centre um, conglomerates per se uh, to, and to discuss the needs in Grand Prairie and, and on the other side of the conversation to see sort of um, to hear what they're looking for so that that was a good conference I also had an opportunity to represent the city at the Northern Alberta elected leaders um, meeting in St. Isidore um, so it was a good conversation and as always that group has um, varying types of conversations as it represents a very vast group of uh, municipalities in northern Alberta and each with uh, different concerns and, and good to get together to sort of hear what each other is working on. Um, as I wasn't at last council meeting, I have a couple other things I'll talk about that possibly were already announced, but uh, I attended the Big Brothers Big Sisters event and kudos to those organizers. It was once again a well-organized, uh, well well-ran well event, uh, well-attended. And I, I haven't heard what their numbers were, but it uh, was a sold out event. So I think they probably did very well for that organization. Um, and last but not least, I had an opportunity to read at uh, the Parkside Montessori School during Literacy Week. And um, as always, it was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I've got a number of items that I'll just uh, speak on behalf of. Uh, this last weekend in Calgary, there was the Alberta Special Olympics, and I was asked uh, by uh, Alberta Goodwill here in Grand Prairie to help send off a couple of athletes that are employed with uh, the Goodwill store here in Grand Prairie. So Steve Jan, uh, Grand Jambi, uh was in bowling, and his goal was to not get any gutter balls and get nothing but strikes. Don't know how that uh, turned out for him. And uh, Chris McKee, uh, some, these are a couple of young fellows that uh, I've known for a few years. Uh, he was competing in floor hockey. And uh, there was a lot of other people from Grand Prairie that went down to Special Olympics, but uh, these are the two from uh, Goodwill. I also want to uh, make mention that today was a, a memorable day for the citizens of Grand Prairie. The York Hotel site uh, was about 10 years ago. It was just shortly after I got elected in 2010 that the York Hotel site went down and uh, Tomeroid apartment building sod turning took place today. So it takes a little while, but uh, it's gonna be a unique building. There's going to be apartments and uh, so residential as well as commercial. And uh, I asked when they were gonna get started and they started today and they're gonna have the concrete uh, poured by the time it starts warming up. And uh, yeah, so it looks like they're ready to go at her. So with that, uh, thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Tool. Councilor Bressy. Great. Well, I'll highlight a couple things. All the this last weekend was really great for me. It was a weekend filled with drama. Where Saturday night I got to go to the Camp Wapiti fundraiser. That's a camp about 15 minutes south of the city that has about last year they had 320 kids show up at their at their camp and they did a inner theater experience and it was awesome. I did not correctly guess who was the person that murdered a few of the guests, but I had an entertaining evening nonetheless. 
And then I got to go to Mamma Mia the next day, which was just a fantastic show. Except for I'm really annoyed that I can't stop singing Super Trooper ever since being there. So that was a great weekend for me. The thing I'll highlight is last week there was a Police Act review meeting on restorative justice. And I wasn't going to go to it because I was thinking, well, restorative justice, I don't know how much municipal application that has. But then I had to be going to the... I'd be going to Calgary for the inner city forum on social policy anyways. And I decided if I'm going to Calgary anyways, I may as well tack on this, this other meeting. But then the inner city forum got canceled at the last minute. So I was kind of upset that I was going to Calgary for a meeting that I didn't know if it would be that relevant to me. And then it turned out to be, from a, from a personal perspective, the best of those meetings I've gone to so far. And it seems to me, my understanding is that we seem to be pretty, pretty far behind a lot of the province when it comes to restorative justice, is at least the understanding I got from talking to some of the provincial folks and some of the academics that were there. And that's something that I want to learn more, see if the perception I got from that meeting is the reality, and try to figure out what is the municipal government's role in that. And I honestly don't know, but that's definitely something I've got stuck in my teeth right now that I look forward to chatting with you, a few of you about, especially those that know more than I do to on what's actually going on in our community and what maybe could be going on in our community. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Um, I uh, wanted to speak to one item that Councillor O'Toole mentioned, uh, just because it is such a big deal, uh, the sod turning uh, or very frozen ground slash mud turning <laughs> that we did for the Toramide, uh, Toramide uh, Towers. Um, the first building of uh, three phases um, I think the intent, as described by the uh, the builders, uh, would be that the second building would start uh, about this time next year, uh, after they're sort of further along with this first building. Uh, the first building has 18 units of residential uh, residential suites on three floors, um, one and two bedroom apartment units um, with elevator access, and it's great to see that kind of uh, opportunity for living in the city's core. Uh, coming onto market. Um, the second building will house about the same, um, and then Morgan and the third. Um, and so, you know, the vision uh, way back when, when the city bought the York Hotel, uh, was to see redevelopment happen on that site. Um, and um, that was a long road <laughs> to get here to today. And it still will be a longer road as they go through construction and start up at that building. But ultimately, um, it looks like we're on a path now to see, uh, you know, a new $5 million building uh, erected on that site um, and um, residential dwelling units, uh, 18 residential dwelling units, which will add to uh, live work options downtown, uh, opportunities for people to live uh, and recreate and shop and everything right in their neighborhood. And, and I think that that's really great. Uh, so it was very exciting to see. So I, I, I wouldn't let that pass without a chance to sort of highlight it as well. Um, but I did want to point out uh, a couple of other events that I attended uh, on behalf of the city um, not last week, but the week before. Um, I attended first in Cochrane at a regular meeting of the Midside City Mayors and CAOs Caucus. Um, this was a special meeting held in Cochrane. Uh, we had invited the leaders of the four provincial political parties to attend, um, and each of them did. Um, so we had a separate session with each of the leaders um, to uh, where we put uh, four questions forward to them all. Uh, in advance, so that they would have some, you know, some common ground to speak to. Um, certainly appreciated the uh, commitment of each of the leaders uh, to discussing uh, relevant issues with Midside Cities on an ongoing basis. Um, it really was an intent. The intent was to open up a dialogue with them, um, but also to establish Midside Cities as a relevant and important voice uh, for affairs affecting the province. And I think the fact that we were able to draw each of the four leaders of the political parties um, to give up an hour of their time and come out to Cochrane. Uh, I think it really speaks to a testament to the um, uh, potential influence of that group of assembled mid-sized cities. Um, we in our group, I guess, have been talking about it quite often, but we might not have shared it with council. Um, you know, that group is comprised of Alberta's 15 uh, largest towns and cities, excluding Edmonton and Calgary, because they're big enough to go out on their own. Um, but those in those 22 municipalities, uh, we represent um, 34 provincial constituencies and nearly a million people. And uh, when you put it in that context, especially heading into a provincial election, mid-sized cities are a force to be reckoned with. And a uh, organization and group that um, should not go unnoticed on the radar of any provincial leader. And so it was great to see that they would all turn out for that. 
Um, later on uh, that week, I had an opportunity to head to Edmonton to attend a regular municipal governance committee meeting for uh, a part of the my AU of A responsibilities. I had to cut that short because um, we received an invitation. I was invited to attend a meeting of senators uh, that was being hosted uh, in Edmonton. Uh, and so myself and uh, AUMA President Barry Morishita from Brooks attended to meet with um, Senators uh, Labukan Benson and Simons, um, as well as the Chief of Staff for Alberta Senator Doug Black and Senator Elaine McCoy, who was on the phone conference called in. Um, and we were there uh, to discuss Bill C-69 um, and the um, Standing Committee on Environment and Energy that is going to be reviewing Bill C-69 in the Senate. Uh, we were there to make the case that municipal leaders are an important voice to, to speak on behalf of communities um, and to speak about the potential impacts on municipalities and on communities of Bill C-69 as written. Um, it was a very, uh, very worthwhile dialogue. Um, we certainly appreciated the opportunity to have an open and frank discussion uh, with those members of the Senate committee. Um, and I was gratified to see uh, shortly after that uh, when the committee resumed its business, uh, they did pass a motion uh, to take the committee uh, on the road. I think they haven't yet determined where they're going to be holding their hearings, um, but there was some discussion uh, prior that they would perhaps only occur in Ottawa um, and that they would bring in anybody that wished to present. Um, we certainly made the case that um, the decisions affecting Canadians need to be made across uh, with the input of Canadians and hearing directly from them. Uh, and then that was best done by taking that Senate committee out, out on the road. Um, and they did follow up in the end with a motion that was passed at the committee to do so. I don't think they've established uh, the, the timing of that or what will happen. Um, but we can expect that AUMA... Uh, on behalf of Alberta municipalities, we'll be leading the charge. I, s I expect that we'll see some invitations coming to our council to join in that effort um, as it comes forward. But I just wanted to keep council apprised and updated on, on that meeting, which I thought was important and relevant to our community. Um, and with that, I will call our meeting adjourned.